Hey guys, if you are catching this video, this is going to probably be the craziest video I've ever made. So before you click off of this thing, you got to hear this. I just found an article on a couple of scientists who have come up with a new technology on how to heat and cool your home. What's crazy about this technology is not only is it better for the environment than a lot of the techniques or refrigerants that we use today, but it's actually good for the environment. And I'll get into more of that in just a moment. But the other thing that's crazy about this is the technology itself. It's gonna be more energy efficient. If they figure all this out, it's just really crazy. You have got to check this out. So I'm gonna put a link to this article down below. I've noticed that there's a few different folks that have done stories on this, but this is by far one of the craziest things that I have done a video on. So first of all, how does this new technology work, right? You're used to what you're used to. You're used to something being in your home, blowing air and having an outdoor unit with a compressor and all of that. This new technology harnesses the same science or technology behind when you put salt on roads, right? So if you have ice on your roads, if you live in a state where it snows or sleeps, you get ice on the roads and then you have to put salt or some sort of ice melt on that ice to get it to melt it's the same sort of technology which is so crazy to me right so the technology we currently use is called vapor compression okay so you have your compressor outside it compresses the refrigerant changing it from a liquid to a vapor and we're all used to that right you've got copper lines that run from the you know outdoor and indoor units and what's really crazy about this new technology is I don't really quite understand what it's going to look like in your home yet I'm not sure they do yet they haven't gotten into all of that but they currently do have a provisional patent this new technology is called forgive me on this I might pronounce it incorrectly but I'm gonna give it a shot I know caloric cooling is what they're calling it. So I'll again put that word down in the description in case you want to read it and tell me how I'm pronouncing it incorrectly. But INO caloric cooling differs from a lot of the other caloric methods that we've seen scientists experiment with in the past. Methods using magnetism, pressure, stretching, electric fields, things like that. But they've never been able to quite harness this ability to create something that would replace what we currently have with the vapor compression type systems we currently have. This new technology differs by using ions to drive solid to liquid phase changes, potential to compete with or even exceed the efficiency of gaseous refrigerants. Now, you might be saying, well, what does this all mean to me? I'm, a, I'm just a customer, I'm just a homeowner that you know is looking to buy a heating and air system. What does all this mean? Well, what's really crazy about this is they're saying that if they work all the kinks out, they figure this out, that the equipment is gonna cost less to be able to use in your home. It is gonna be better for the environment. In fact, not only is it gonna be able to use a zero GWP, which is something we talked about in other videos, a lot of the new refrigerants coming out are gonna have a lower GWP, global warming potential, from the existing 410A refrigerant that we currently use. So GWP is something that we talk about a lot. And so they're saying that this is not only going to be zero GWP, but it actually might be GWP negative. Using a material like ethylene carbonate could actually be carbon negative because you produce it by using carbon dioxide as an input. This could give us a place to use CO2 from carbon capture. So instead of adding more carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, this would actually be consuming that, which is just so crazy to me how they've come up with this. These people are way smarter than me and I just say hats off to them, especially if they're able to figure out a way that they're able to heat and cool your home for less money in the end. So not only would it be better for the environment, it would be more efficient for you to use in your home, the technology itself, and the equipment itself be less expensive. So only time will tell, as we've seen in the past, when new things come out, uh, instead of going down in price, they actually go up in price. Two scientists that work at the Department of Energy's Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, and they've not only created this technology or, or discovered it more likely, but they also have already started running data on it, running tests and trying different methods of different types of materials that they can use to just kind of, you know, figure this out, to try to figure out how they're going to make this more applicable, something you can actually create and be able to sell, right? You know, you'd be able to go to wherever and buy a box and then install that box in your home 
to heat and cool your home. So heating and cooling as we know it, that's why I think this is so crazy. Heating and cooling as we know it could change drastically because of all of this. You're going to have professionals that are at the top of their game. They're, you know, the masters of what we do currently who will be just starting over with all of this, just like anybody. So they're continuing to work on prototypes to determine how the technique might scale to support large amounts of cooling, improve the amount of temperature change the system can support, and improve the efficiency. Ravi Prasher, hopefully I said that right, who is a colleague of these scientists working at the Berkeley Labs Energy Technology Area and Adjunct professional in mechanical engineering at UC Berkeley said, we have this brand new thermodynamic cycle and framework that brings together elements from different fields and we've shown that it can work. Now it's time for experimentation to test different combinations of materials and techniques to meet the engineering challenges. So this is just crazy, man. I mean, for real, this is one of the craziest videos. This is the craziest article that I came over. This is brand new. This article was just written on January 4th which was today. So it just came out today. I don't know when they actually received the provisional patent, but you know, this is new stuff. This is crazy. You may in the future have a system that instead of having a refrigerant in it with a compressor, you're going to have some sort of salt in there or some sort of material that's being able to change the, you know, the solid to liquid type deal. And for all I know, the systems could look exactly the same, you know, still have some sort of coil outside, but the technology itself is going to be better for the environment, better for you as the consumer. And if they figure all this out, HVAC as we know it is going to change. So what are your thoughts? I'd love to hear them. Please comment down below. This is just a crazy one, right? So yeah, comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.